Hello everyone, I hope that you all are fit and fine and let me tell you that I am completely fine as well. In this video, we are going to discuss what are all the updates in the capital gain, capital gain chapter for the May 24 and November 24 exam onwards. Fine. So these are all the new updates that are applicable from May 24 and November 24 examination onwards. First and foremost, let us come to the transactions not regarded as transfer section number 47 transactions not regarded as transfer in this there is a new point which is conversion of egr into gold and vice versa so firstly to understand this provision we need to understand the concept of egr if you are able to understand the concept then the provisions become very very easy and there are interlinking provisions also that also i will explain now itself so that you can have a wholesome understanding first and foremost sir what is egr egr stands for <coughs> electronic gold receipts electronic gold receipts now what is this EGR sir and what is the use of EGR and why is there a provision in income tax act let us try to understand. The Indian government has the power to print currency. The RBI prints currency but the Indian government only instructs the RBI to print currency based on the situations prevailing in the country. So Indian government wants to print currency but for this currency that is rupee, Indian rupee, there should be some security. This security comes in the form of gold reserves. Gold reserves. So it is compulsory for the Indian government or the RBI to have an X amount of gold to back the Indian currency or to support the Indian currency and here I am talking about the physical gold. So the government should compulsorily have a huge amount of physical gold so that they can make the Indian currency very very secure. Okay. Now how to get this gold sir? In India you know that gold is not mined in the country. It has to be imported from other countries like South Africa, Australia etc. where the gold is actually mined. But if India gets let's say gold from South Africa then what happens? India gets gold from South Africa then what happens is number one the rate is determined by South Africa. That is the first thing because control is in the hand of the supplier. However, this is not a very big problem because more or less the rates of gold is standard in the entire world. But there is one more big problem and that is Indian government have to spend foreign currency. Foreign currency to buy this gold. So this is a very big problem because the Indian government wants to have as much foreign currency as possible in India so that they can use this foreign currency to pay off their foreign currency loans, foreign currency interest, foreign currency trades etc. That is why it is important to have as much foreign currency as possible but so much amount of foreign currency Indian government has to spend to get this gold. So what does the government do? The government has found out another solution for this problem. Now to have physical gold with them, the Indian government thought that so many Indians are having kilos and kilos of gold, tons and tons of gold in their houses itself as their savings. So why not we get the gold, physical gold from the people and use that as the reserve for our currency. Hence they brought a concept called EGR. EGR that is electronic gold receipt. Now how does the EGR work sir? First and foremost there is a organization called SEBI correct? You know about SEBI. I need not explain further. SEBI gives rights of issuing EGR to Volt Manager. Volt Manager. Okay. So if I am a company, 
I have to satisfy certain conditions and if I register with SEBI, even I can become a Volt Manager. Now, what will this Volt Manager do? The Volt Manager will collect gold from people. Okay, and they will give electronic gold receipts to the people. Let's say, let's take an example of Mr. A. So, Mr. A is a person. He will give gold to the Volt Manager and he will collect the electronic gold receipt from the Volt Manager. Sir, what is the benefit of Mr. A to give the gold and get the gold receipts? The benefits are, number one, electronic gold receipt value is always same as gold. Value is same as gold. So if gold's value is let's say 6500 then electronic gold receipt value also will be 6500 tomorrow if gold value will be 7000 then electronic gold uh, receipt value also will be 7000 so the value of both of them will be same hence what mr a can do if mr a has taken uh, gold as an investment he wants to save the gold for future purpose any time he can go to the vault manager give his physical gold and get electronic gold receipt this electronic gold receipt is issued in DMAT form Gana. Like how shares are issued in DMAT form. Similarly, even EGR is issued in DMAT form. Now, what is the advantage of this DMAT form? It means that this electronic gold receipt you can also buy and sell in the stock exchange. So if you have any broker account like a Moti Ulla Loswal account or a Zeroda account or a Grow account, you can sell and buy electronic gold receipts online also anytime you want at the current prevailing price of gold you get my point so now what is the benefit for mr a now mr a has no tension at all because if gold is in their house they have to safely keep gold in a locker or they have to safely keep it in their house so there is always that stress that someone might come and steal their gold and some other uh, charges are also associated with keeping the gold physical gold with them so instead what they can do they will pay some minimum conversion charges uh, convert this gold into electronic gold receipt at any time and also sir can electronic gold receipt be converted to physical gold yes it can be converted into physical gold also so you can either give gold and get egr or you can give egr and get gold so the benefit of mr a is that he need not have the stress of having uh, the physical gold making it secure and having a storage place for that gold instead he can easily have an egr in his dmat account and trade it whenever he wants and whenever he wants if he wants physical gold he can convert it anytime into physical gold that is the benefit for mr a now what is the benefit for the government the benefit for the government is that this vault manager will keep this gold safely keep this gold safely in the vault and this gold will become a very good security for the indian currency with the indian government the gold deposits of the indian government will increase so for both of them it is a win-win situation you get my point so this is electronic gold receipt concept karna now what happens is see gold is a capital asset similarly even electronic gold receipt is an instrument and that is why it is also a capital asset since both are capital asset if you are giving one capital asset and getting one more capital asset it is exchange exchange is also a transfer and hence capital gain will arise on the conversion of gold to electronic gold receipt but you tell me honestly if someone will put capital gain on conversion then will anyone convert their gold into gold receipt answer is no that is why the income tax act tells that if you convert electronic gold receipt into gold or if you convert gold into electronic gold receipt then this transaction will not be regarded as transfer okay so let's come back to this page so conversion of electronic gold receipt into gold and gold into electronic gold receipt is not regarded as transfer here you please write in some small wordings wherever you find space that electronic gold receipt is issued by whom vault manager registered with sebi registered with sebi 
right now there are only two companies that are registered as volt manager with sebi if you google their name you will also find out their name fine so this is the concept of electronic gold receipt now let us also read the related provisions okay let us jump to page 10.6 where we are discussing the cost of acquisition and period of holding see here karna i know that you will automatically understand this concept but still for the sake of teaching i am teaching this concept okay elect if gold is converted to electronic gold receipt or electronic gold receipt is converted into gold then what will be the cost of acquisition of the new asset okay this concept is same as the concept that i already taught you if asset is sold the asset and converted into new asset and conversion was not a transfer then cost of acquisition is the cost of acquisition of the old asset and period of holding and indexation also will be from the old asset so in this only one more example has been included hence if gold is converted into see here if gold is converted into egr let's say this gold was purchased at rupees 10000 and it was uh, purchased on 1st of february 2005 and it was converted in 10th of march 2024 fine then sir what will be the cost of acquisition the cost of acquisition of egr of egr will be how much rupees 10000 i am not considering indexation i am just telling the cost after this you have to apply indexation also fine and what will be the period of holding the period of holding will start from 1st of february onwards do you get my point so read this one time period of holding of gold will be the period for which the gold is held prior to conversion so period of gold holding will also include the period here if you will get confused you write here also also includes here also you write also includes so the period of holding of gold also includes the period of holding for which the gold is held prior to conversion similarly the period of holding of egr also includes the period for which the egr is held prior to conversion so from the period of the old asset you have to calculate period of holding and cost of acquisition will be cost of gold before conversion cost of gold will be the cost of egr in the hands of such person you get my point i hope this electronic gold receipt concept is clear now let us move to the next concept <laughs> okay cost inflation index in the previous videos you had learned about the cost inflation index of a before year now we are learning the cost inflation index for previous year 23 24 which is what assessment year 24 25 so in your examination that is may 24 and november 24 examination the relevant year is previous year 23 24 and assessment year 24 25 so for this previous year the cost inflation index is how much 348 so you have to do all the calculation keeping the cost to inflation index as 348 in mind you get my point this you have to by heart if any other year is given in the examination for that the question paper itself will contain cost inflation index so you will be able to solve the answer easily now one more provision was added in this cost of acquisition and cost of improvement karna now what is this provision see here cost of acquisition of asset or the cost of improvement thereto would not include the deductions claimed on interest claimed on interest under section 24b under the provisions of or under the provisions of chapter 6a here you can write 80ee and 80ee <coughs> please write 80ee <coughs> and 80ee let me explain you this concept <coughs> this is very very logical even if i did not teach you you will answer this uh, you will solve this question correctly only but still let me teach you the concept let's say there is a house karna okay this house was purchased by mr a for 1 crore rupees 
to purchase the house mr a also took a loan of rupees 1 crore fine on this mr a pays 10% interest how much 10% interest which is how much 10 lakhs 10 lakhs is paid as interest now is this 10 lakh interest allowed as deduction yes or no answer is yes in income from house property chapter if a house is purchased then the interest on housing loan is allowed as deduction if it is a self occupied property then up to 2 lakhs and if it is not a self occupied property rented property uh, if it is a rented property or deemed to be let out property then it can go more than 2 lakhs also it can be entire 10 lakhs also now let us assume this entire 10 lakhs is allowed as deduction under section 24 b just a second pause Okay, let's continue. Let us assume this entire ten lakhs is allowed as deduction. Allowed as deduction under section twenty four B. Sir, sometimes what happens is in section twenty four B only two lakhs is allowed, but assessee can also claim further deduction in section eighty double E or eighty double E A. That we are going to learn in deduction chapter. Okay, so eighty section twenty four B or section eighty double E or section eighty double E A. If the amount is allowed as deduction under these sections, then since the amount is already allowed. you cannot add this amount to the cost of the asset you get my point can you add this 10 lakh interest which is already allowed as expense in the cost of the house that is 1 crore answer is no because it will result in double expense how because when you calculate the capital gain correct you will take cost of acquisition and you will reduce it from the full value of consideration correct this cost of acquisition if you add the interest then you will have reduced capital gain so it is not possible to put the interest in cost of acquisition also and claim it as a deduction under section 24b 80e and 80e a also that means that if an interest is allowed as deduction then such interest will not be we cannot add it in the cost that is only the concept please read this once again the cost of acquisition the cost of acquisition of the asset or the cost of improvement would not include the deductions claimed as interest under section 24b or any other provisions of chapter 6a that is section 80e and section 80e a fine 80e and 80e a you will be learning in the deduction chapter so here you can write link deduction link deductions now coming to section 55 section 55 talks about intangible assets okay in the class we had learned about bc shrinivasa shetty case where if there is no provision about the determining the cost of the intangible asset then the cost will become undeterminable and capital gain itself cannot be calculated if capital gain cannot be calculated it cannot be taxed that is why to counter that bc srinivasa shetty case only section 55 was introduced which told that cost of acquisition and cost of improvement of certain assets can be determined determined as follows if it is acquired from a previous owner then the purchase cost will be the cost of acquisition improvement cost will always be zero self generated cost will always be zero and if it is received as gift then it will be the cost of previous owner this we had already studied now certain intangible assets were not included in this these sections this section that is why what happened the assessees were making use of this provision that is bc srinivasa shetty case and they were telling that our capital gain is not taxable at all now 
what has the government done the government has added the wordings any other intangible asset of business or profession okay so this section has become more wider so even if an intangible asset is there which is not included in this section before and if it is related to business or profession it can be patent copyright trademark any intangible asset of any nature any intellectual property it will be included in this section similarly any other right also included here so if any other intangible asset in of business or profession or any other right is there then also such intangible asset is included here it means what for such intangible asset also if it is purchased from previous owner then it will be purchase cost if it is other than purchased it will be cost of previous owner and if it is self generated cost will be zero if it is improvement also cost will be cost of improvement will be zero fine i hope you are clear now let's go to the next one okay kanna we had studied about unit linked insurance policy but a good news for you icai has removed some part of syllabus from your uh, removed some part from your syllabus and that is section 451b and also fourth and fifth proviso of section 1010d so the calculation of capital gain on unit linked insurance policy and also the exemption in 1010d related to unit linked insurance policy is not applicable in your syllabus it is not applicable for your examination but does it mean that it is removed from income tax act answer is no not at all these provisions are still there in the income tax act if you know the provisions well and good no problem if you do not know the provisions also no problem fine but we had studied the definition of capital asset there we had studied about unit linked insurance plan sir is this point in the syllabus answer is yes this point is still there in the syllabus and you have to study karna fine so what is removed section 451b is removed from syllabus fourth and fifth proviso of 1010d this that we have uh, this has been removed from syllabus and also when we studied section 111a and 112a we had studied about equity oriented fund there also we we saw a point relating to ulip so this point has also totally been removed from the syllabus okay hapada some burden has been reduced in capital gain correct now let's come to next change okay let's come to exemptions kana so section 54 we had learnt about exemptions under section 54 series 54 54b 54d etc now in section 54 which is capital gain on sale of residential property and used for residential purpose and the new asset should also be a residential house property in such case what is the new provision the new provision is that the maximum exemption has been limited to 10 crore rupees maximum exemption is how much kana 10 crore rupees it means what the cost of the new asset maximum should be 10 crore sir what if it is 100 crore if it is 100 crore the cost of new asset if it is 100 crore then you should calculate as only 10 crores you get my point in your capital gain calculation if the cost of new asset is 100 crores you should take as maximum 10 crores only and do the capital gain calculation similarly sir this cgas capital gain account scheme is there no in that also the maximum amount allowed is 10 crore rupees more than that if you deposit in cgas that is capital gain account scheme it will not be considered under income tax act you deposit that is not a problem but in income tax you will not get any benefit for that deposit fine similarly even in section 54f when you do the calculation section 54f is what you sell any long term capital asset and after selling you use the entire money to buy a residential house property correct one residential house 
not the capital gain entire money here the concept is a little different now here also this residential house that is to be bought its value also can be maximum 10 crores maximum 10 crores if the value of that house is more than 10 crores you should consider only 10 crores you get my point and here also in capital gain account scheme the maximum amount is 10 crores the government does not want to give benefit to super rich people who are having crores and crores of capital gain and escaping by selling one property and buying another property they wanted to restrict this exemption only to the middle class upper middle class people and to a certain extent of capital gain they do not want to give this benefit for the higher amounts fine so this change is there and now let us discuss a brand new section that is section 50 AA computation of capital gain in case of market linked debenture and specified mutual fund okay market linked debenture and specified mutual fund firstly let us know what is this market linked debenture and what is this specified mutual fund specified mutual fund let us see it is a mutual fund where not more than 35 percentage of the total proceeds is invested in equity shares of the domestic company see see Kanna. there is a mutual fund okay there are two types of mutual fund equity mutual fund and debt mutual fund equity mutual fund means minimum 65 percent should be there in equity fine if and debt uh, mutual fund means 65 percent should be there in debt fine now in this case see here a mutual fund where not more than 35 percentage is invested in equity so maximum equity percentage is how much 35 percentage it means what minimum debt percentage is how much 65 percentage maximum 35 equity it means what minimum 65 debt it means specified mutual fund is nothing but a debt mutual fund where not more than 35 percent means max to max 35 percent is invested in equity shares and how is this 35 percent calculated this 35 percent is calculated by taking the annual average of the daily closing figures so every day they will take the closing amount and they will take the average of the closing amount of all the days in the year and then they will decide the percentage so this is how the percentage is calculated this is specified mutual fund now let us see what is market linked debenture market linked debenture is a security which has an underlying principal component in the form of a debt security and where the returns are linked to market returns on other underlying security or indices fine it includes any security classified or regulated as a market linked debenture by sebi so it means what kanna market linked debenture is also debenture debenture means what it is a type of security that represents a loan or a debt correct but here what is different generally if there is a debenture the debenture will have an interest rate correct let's say 7% debenture 8% debenture 9% debenture however in case of market uh, market linked debenture the debenture will not have a fixed interest rate instead the interest rate will depend on the market condition it will depend on market condition market condition means any other security in the market or index indices index indices means what example nifty or sensex all these are indices also if sebi is telling that a security is a market debt market linked debenture then you should also consider it as a market linked debenture now let me give you an example if you want you can note this down also to have more clarity example a limited issues a market linked debenture which gives 10 percent return if the nifty 50 does not fall by more than 20 percent during the tenure of the market linked debenture if it falls then no return will be given only principal amount will be repaid let me explain. So 
so this a limited is there no it has given a debenture let's say the value of debenture is 1 lakh rupee okay and it is given for 5 years 5 years now what are they telling if at all the value uh, if at all the value of nifty 50 nifty 50 nifty 50 is what it is a index if the value of nifty 50 goes below 20 percentage so let's say while issuing the debenture the value of nifty 50 was 20000 okay the value of nifty 50 was 20000 now what are they telling the nifty 50 price should not go down by more than 20% 20% is what 4000 so it means what during this 5 years nifty 50 should never touch 16000 if it goes below 16000 then this a limited will not give any interest however if during this entire 5 years not even in a single day nifty 50 goes below 16000 then a limited will give 10% interest you get my point sir what if there is no interest it means that only principal repayment will be there at the end of 5 uh, years you will get back the 1 lakh rupees but you will not earn any interest at all you get my point such type of debenture is called market linked debenture fine now what happens no karna this market linked debenture and specified mutual fund okay both of them are actually debt instrument specified mutual fund also contains minimum 65% in debt okay maximum 35% equity means what minimum 65% in debt similarly even this market linked debenture is a debenture however this specified mutual fund and market linked debenture are both traded in the stock exchange this for this mutual fund also daily nav will be calculated correct and for market linked debenture also it can be traded in stock exchange traded in stock exchange you can buy a market linked debenture from stock exchange you get my point it means what it means that even though it is a debt okay the value of debt never changes it will remain constant correct since the incremental value is given in the form of interest see here if there is a debt okay will the value of debt increase answer is no the value of debt will not increase it will always remain the same because the debt value is given in the form of interest this i have already explained you when i was explaining you why there is no indexation allowed on debentures and bonds that that time i had explained you this concept now listen here even though the value of debt does not increase but still they are traded in the stock exchange this market linked debenture and specified mutual fund correct they are traded in the stock exchange now why will some person buy this from the stock exchange they will buy this only because the price can increase or decrease in the stock exchange it means what the only intention of the person buying a market linked debenture or a specified mutual fund is that they can buy for a low price and sell for a high price this is called speculation this is called what it is called speculation it means you you are not concerned about anything else you just want to buy in a lower price and sell at a higher price you are not interested to invest in the company you are only interested to make profit on price fluctuation the government wants to treat this speculation as business income but since these both are capital asset they cannot take it to pgbp okay that is why they had they have introduced section 50 aa now look here section 50 aa transfer of unit of specified mutual fund or market linked debenture section 50 50 aa provides for the computation of capital gain in terms of in case of transfer of unit of a specified mutual fund acquired on or after 1/4 2023 so this is applicable only if the specified mutual fund is purchased on or after 1/4 2023 very very important 
दिस एंटायर सेक्शन इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट करना आई एम एक्सपेक्टिंग दैट अ क्वेश्चन वेलकम इन इधर मे ट्वेंटी फोर और नवंबर ट्वेंटी फोर मे ट्वेंटी फोर एन एम सी क्यू माइट कम एंड इन नवंबर ट्वेंटी फोर अ फुल फ्लेज क्वेश्चन कैन कम फाइन एंड मार्केट लिंक डिवेंचर सेक्शन फिफ्टी डबल ए विल हैव एन ओवर राइडिंग अफेक्ट इन स्पाइट ऑफ एनीथिंग कंटेंट इन सेक्शन टू फोर्टी टू ए विच डिफाइन्स अ शॉर्ट टर्म कैपिटल सेट ना वॉट आर दे टेलिंग द सेक्शन इज टेलिंग दैट अ स्पेसिफाइड म्यूचुअल फंड और अ मार्केट डिंक्ट डिवेंचर विल ऑलवेज बी कंसिडर्ड एज वॉट शॉर्ट टर्म कैपिटल असेट वाई बिकॉज इफ दे कंसिडर्ड दिस एज लॉन्ग टर्म कैपिटल असेट यू विल क्लेम इंडेक्सेशन देन यूर प्रॉफिट विल रिड्यूस और कैपिटल गेन विल रिड्यूस एंड यू विल पे रिड्यूस द टैक्स करेक्ट हेंस दे आर टेलिंग दैट वॉट एवर द पीरियड माइट बी इट विल ऑलवेज बी कंसिडर्ड एज शॉर्ट टर्म कैपिटल असेट एंड इट इज ओवर राइडिंग इट इज ओवर राइडिंग सेक्शन टू फोर्टी टू ए so here also i want you to make a note come to section 242a where we discussed about short term capital asset and long term capital asset in page number 10.8 i want you to note here period of holding concept note as per section 50aa specified mutual fund and market link debenture are always considered as what short term Please pause the video, write down the provision, and then unpause the video. Okay. Done. So since it is only considered as short-term capital asset, the capital gain will also be called what? Short-term capital gain, and the tax applicable is normal rate of tax. Sir, how to compute capital gain? Capital gain is computed in the normal manner, Kanna. First, you have to take full value of consideration. Full value of consideration. It means what? Selling price of market-linked debenture or specified mutual fund. Selling price. Then you can reduce transfer expense. Correct. Then you will get net consideration. From this net consideration, you can further reduce what? Cost of acquisition. this cost of acquisition is indexation allowed answer is no no indexation since it is always short term cost is always what short term after reducing the cost you will get short term capital gain or short term capital loss you get my point so this is the concept and sir i told you that the government wants to consider this as a business since it is only speculation there is no point of investment in case of market link debenture etc that is why you might think that stt and ctt might be allowed stt and ctt might be allowed however since this is capital gain chapter stt ctt is not allowed as deduction here ctt will not be applicable only stt will be applicable so stt is not allowed as deduction nowhere in capital gain stt is allowed as deduction hence even in this section stt will not be allowed as deduction so let me summarize this section once again if there is a capital asset called market linked debenture or specified mutual fund what is a market linked debenture market linked debenture is a debenture whose return is dependent on the market or if it is called as a market linked debenture by sebi fine what is a specified mutual fund specified mutual fund is a mutual fund in which maximum 35% only should be equity okay and it should be purchased on or after 1/4 2023 in if you have such capital asset then it is always considered as short term capital asset and the capital gain also will be considered as short term capital gain and it is subject to normal rate of tax okay normal rate of tax how will you compute compute capital gain take full value of consideration reduce the transfer expense and you will get net consideration from this you should reduce the cost and you will get the short term capital gain or short term capital loss and no stt is allowed as deduction in case of section 50 aa also fine i hope you are clear with all the provisions with this all the updates in capital gain chapter are over now in this video let us discuss the remaining updates in income from other sources chapter first and foremost there is a change in section 5627b from may 2024 examination onwards and what is that change 
now this section is applicable not only to a resident but also to a non resident so huge change that now angel tax is applicable not only to residents but also applicable to non residents next section 56213 has been introduced in the income tax act but this section we will discuss along with deduction chapter so after the deduction chapter there are certain changes in deductions also that i will be explaining and then along with that i will be discussing this new section also fine now let's come to the next section and that is section 115 bbj please make this correction section 115 bbj tax on winnings from online games now online games uh, winnings has also been included first and for first and foremost in the income definition and now there is a separate tax for the online games but it is same as section 115 bb okay that is the tax on winnings from lottery crossword puzzles etc so whatever section 115 bb says same way even for winnings from online games all the similar provisions will apply let us go through the provisions uh, quickly first and foremost this section applies to net winnings from online games so whatever winning from online game is there that will be covered under section 115 bbj meaning of online game online game is a game that is offered on the internet and is accessible by a user through a computer resource including any telecommunication device so it can be mobile phone it can be ipad it can be laptop it can be desktop it can be any telecommunication device and in that device using the internet you are playing a game and on winning that game you are getting a particular award or prize or any money on that tax is payable under section 115 bbj what is the rate of tax it is flat 30 percentage plus health and education cess and surcharge if applicable okay 30 percentage flat rate of tax next is any expense allowed as deduction no expense is allowed as deduction no deduction is allowed okay under chap for under chapter 6a no loss is allowed basic exemption limit also you cannot set off so all the restrictions which were applicable to lottery same are also applicable to winnings from online games and even the tax rate is same okay so even in the special rates of tax i have included the winnings from online games there also you can note down there also you need not note down it is already given fine 30 percentage rate of tax so for example if any person is paying a game such as a pubg tournament or a fortnite tournament or even in case of dream 11 etc whatever winnings is there that will be taxable under this section okay so that's it in income from other sources see you in the next video till then take care bye bye